Good afternoon, Sam and Emma. This is John from San Antonio. John from San Antonio. For pole position today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this show has uh, done a good job covering uh, how the American-Israeli uh, Public Affairs Committee, or APAC, and the Democratic Majority for Israel, or DMFI, is going to be spending $100 million targeting black and brown candidates in the 2024 Congressional Democratic primaries. After spending $30 million in 2022, just yesterday morning is announced that DMFI is endorsing 81 Democratic House incumbents. There are 76 days until the Congressional primaries start on March 5th in California, Texas, North Carolina, Alabama, and Arkansas. The filing deadline has passed in all of these states. I'm going to focus on a few races in California where progressives have a chance of winning. California has a jungle primary where the top two candidates advance from all parties. In the Senate race, I believe Barbara Lee is the best progressive candidate. She's been consistent throughout her career. And most people remember her as the only person in the House to vote against the Patriot Act. Some people have, uh, yeah, I know uh, some people have some trepidation because she's 77 years old, but I feel she'll, I still feel she's an effective communicator and will deliver a more consistent progressive vote than anyone else in the race. Lee's polling at 12% in the latest uh, Survey USA poll, and this is a three point rise since the last poll. And I, I think that's because the younger voters know that Lee was one of the first uh, legislators to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. Another uh, progressive, Katie Porter, is, is also at 12 percent. Republican Steve Garvey is at 15 percent, and Alan Adam, Adam Schiff is leading at 22 percent. In the last two cycles, the most progressive uh, candidate, uh, candidates have faced each other. In the general election, when the 34th district, which covers the downtown Los Angeles area, David Kim, who was endorsed by DSA in 2022, is running against Jimmy Gomez, who has the top 30 progressive uh, voting record among House legislatures. In 2020, uh, Gomez won by six points. In 2022, Gomez won uh, only won by 22.4. If uh, Kim's margins continue to go down, hopefully he will win soon. Yesterday uh, morning, Gomez was endorsed by DMFI. Uh, the, the 16th district covers the southwest uh, San Francisco Bay Area and runs from South Central uh, runs to South Central San Jose. Anna Eshu has been in Congress since 1992. Will be retiring in the last two cycles. Progressive Rishi Kumar has qualified for the general election. In 2020, he lost by Eshu by 26.4 percent, and in 2022, he lost by 16. 15.6. There are six other candidates that are running, so it's an open, unpredictable field. It's going to be interesting to see if a centrist uh, can consolidate the vote. In the 29th district, which runs from North Hollywood to the San Fernando Fa Valley, incumbent Tony Cardenas is retiring, and progressive Angelica Duenas is running for the fourth time in a row. In previous cycles, she's been endorsed by Our Revolution and the Sunrise Movement. Uh, she she qualified for the general election in the last two cycles, and she lost by 13.2% in 2020 and 17 points in 2022. Assemblywoman Luz Rivas is the only other Democrat uh, to run in the primary, and an all-Democratic general election is expected again This district, uh, in this district, which is 68% uh, Hispanic. One of the biggest problems in the Democratic Party is the incumbency protection racket that protects the status quo, which makes it harder to re implement real change on important topics uh, because the establishment candidates are too dependent on big money donors who they owe favors to for their donations. Uh, the fact that no one has, uh, with a high profile has, has challenged Biden, despite his being extremely unpopular, is a terrible sign for Democrats, and I hope that uh, will change in the future. Uh, the best thing uh, that Biden could do for the country is to drop out and let someone else run who is fairly popular because Democrats have a slight lead in the congressional uh, generic ballot, but Biden is losing badly uh, in swing state polling. Uh, I understand that it's, it's still extremely early, and I'm not saying Biden can't win, but there are many other presidents who had a higher approval rating uh, that have lost according to a press reports that I've read. Those candidates include Trump, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, Ford, and LBJ, who decided to drop out after the initial New Hampshire primary in 1968. If you have any comments or questions, I'll be happy to address them. Well, first off, um, hi, uh, John. Long time no hear so from. So good to hear from you. 
That's my yeah, first comment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I think this show has really done a, a great job. You know, again, I, I know I called last year at the end of the uh, at the end of the year, complimenting on uh, your, your coverage of unions and all the triumphs that have continued also in 2023. So you've done a great job about that, and also I think you've done a great job uh, covering the initial uh, October 7th attacks and the. Uh, Gen, uh, Gazan genocide that's happened after that. So, uh, Thank you, John. Please... It's, it's kind. I, I, now I have some uh, some uh, some substantive uh, questions about the, uh, the the polling with Biden. I mean, I think it is highly, highly impossibly unlikely that Joe Biden is going to make a decision to not be the candidate. Um, I know some people differ on that. Um, I would be um, okay with him making that decision. I would, uh, I would be probably significantly happier about it, uh, because it, it does look like it's powerless. Do you, uh, like, what are the signs as you look at the polls, right? I mean, he's, uh, his approval rating is dismal. I don't know that anybody has ever had this type of approval rating in one as the president, but of course he's also running against, um, a, uh, former president, which probably cuts both ways. The fact that it's Trump uh, hurts. What? What? Is there any place for him to get new votes from 2020? Um, it doesn't look like right now. It looks pretty bleak. But is there any place for him to get new votes? Uh, I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see how many people actually show up to vote because just the, you know, the record that well, wasn't a, a, a total record as a percentage, but it was the highest uh, since 1900, you know, and uh, women were only given the, the vote in, in 2020. 20. Yeah. In 1920. No, but I'm yeah, saying in, in 2020. 20. Okay. You're saying 2020 yeah. numbers with it was a high, like a, a record turnout. Do, we have really no sense of this yet. Do we? I mean, because, I think like um, in 2022, it felt like uh, Democrats did quite well despite Biden. And the question becomes like, will someone come out and vote against their Republican congressperson, let's say, or, you know, or for their Democratic congressperson, but, um, you know, leave the uh, Biden blank or do people just stay at home just, bro you know, generally? And the question is, are there more Republicans or Democrats that are going to stay home because of their mutual distaste of their candidate? Yeah, I am concerned about turnout. Uh, in 2022, uh, you know, the turnout wasn't as good as it was in 2018. And I, I do feel that the, the 2018, I mean, 2022 was a very miscategorized by the press, you know, because uh, Democrats did, uh, they had uh, 8 million less votes than in 2018, and which is a 15% drop. And that's not really talked about because of all the triumphs in the swing state, let's right. say in the, the uh, Senate, Senate races, and in the governor's races, and the Secretary of State's races, where it did seem like, you know, the the idea of uh, kind of bucking authoritarianism was, you know, really had a, that it was a very positive effect in those swing states. And so I hope that happens again. I do think that, that Biden really should run on, you know, the fact that Trump is an authoritarian, because I think that that is what, what drove the vote in 2020. I don't think it would, people didn't show up in record numbers because you know, they felt overwhelmingly positive for Biden. Right. It was mostly an anti-Trump vote. And so they should really focus on that. And, you know, even in, even though, uh, all of the, uh, the head to head votes are, are meaningless, completely meaningless because of our system of the electoral college, uh, it shouldn't be that way, but it is. And so, uh, you know, even this morning, you're seeing uh, in the, the Maris poll, uh, 47, 45 in likely voters, which is always more predictable than registered voters. And so, you know, again, super early. But I mean, 
the the idea of of having uh, people running is really what I wanted to emphasize the most. Is that there's just too much uh, thought of of you know we we got to be united. The, the centrists that are you know essentially gaining power, and I am concerned that not enough people are running because if you look at the other three cycles in the post uh, you know after the 2016 Bernie run, at this point you had more people running, you had more people raising money, just as Democrats. You know, you're talking about primary people. challengers. Right, we're talking about primary channel challengers, and I would like to, you know, I'd like to see more people. And, I, and there's still plenty of time right now. Uh, right now, there are only six pe- uh, states that actually had their congressional filing deadline, right. uh, you know, finished. And so I, I still hope that that can happen. But I mean, I, I know that also, you know, most people are focusing on, you know, can the squad actually hold their seats, you know, from, you know, challenges from Jamal Bowman and uh, Ilhan Omar, uh, Summer Lee, and uh, and so those are going to be important races, too. And I, I, I do think they can win those races still, despite the kind too. of money. Yeah. I do, too. But, I don't think, I mean, these are, um, I, I, the, the advantage, I think, that, you know, the incumbency has for uh, squad members is that they are almost necessarily connected to their communities in a way that people like, you know, Crowley wasn't. Mm. Uh, and so because of their very nature of the way that they won in the first instance, um, they, uh, you know. Uh, and the nature it, of the district in the sense that I think that, you know, the, the you're going to have more progressive voters in these like urban safe blue districts, at least when it comes to. AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, you know, representing cities that are going to be more in tune with that kind of money coming in from the, APAC. And, 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 and the question is, you know, are they going to come out? And I think because of the nature and the way that these people won their first seats, it's more likely that their uh, their uh, supporters are are, are motivated um, you know, but, but we'll see. All right. Last question, John. And it's got to be quick because we got to jump. Um, you say you want uh, Joe Biden to retire. OK, I mean, to you know, I don't think that's going to happen. But let's say it did. What how do you envision like who would be the candidate that you think would be the strongest? And and how would that process unfold? Like, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a clean type of situation, right? Because everybody there would be a significant portion of the Democratic Party. I don't know what uh, portion that would be that would say, like, well, it's obviously got to be Kamala Harris. Um, and I, you know, personally, not terribly interested, uh, in the, in that outcome. I imagine there, you know, there's a lot of people who would not want the, that outcome, but there's also a lot of people who would, how, like play it out for me. It's not just a generic Democrat that would replace Biden. That person would actually have to be a person and they would have to go through a process that might be uh, fracturing as well. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, that would happen. And uh, the unfortunate thing is that, that kind of Biden rigged this thing to where like filing deadlines are. Yeah, there's already been about 20 filing deadlines that have passed in the presidential race. And so what you're saying is actually uh, harder to to envision than than uh, even you're you're imagining but, right uh, but yeah i mean it would be a wide open field just like it was in 2020 and you know you would have newsome and you'd have whitmer and well, would it be have, a wide open field like it was in 2020 because there wasn't a, an incumbent vice president yeah that's true but i i just don't think that that harris has enough of a, a grip on the electorate i mean oh no no be- i agree with you i agree with you in that respect but i'm just saying there is a portion of the democratic party that would be like hey wait a second when was the last time this happened and she's a black woman and what that means for passing her over you know yeah i i think that she I mean, she would run, but uh, I just don't think that she would have the support immediately and that, that people would 
would come into the race. I just yeah. think it's inevitable. I mean, you know, so who would uh, who do you think would uh, who do you think would be the strongest candidate coming out of all of it? Last the last word. Uh, um, well, I would hope Bernie, but I mean, no. yeah, I mean, uh, okay, well, I mean, He's not gonna I, you know, I still, I, mean, I still have, I still have some hope from, for, let's say, Warren or Whitmer. I mean, I think Whitmer has a lot of intangibles that people like. And uh, I think she's done some good things recently. I mean, it's not ideologically my favorite candidate, but, you know, I, I do think that that she has a lot of appeal to people, and she has done better in polls than Biden in head-to-head. John from San Antonio, always great to hear from you. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Have a good new Thanks, year. Thanks, John. That was uh, very fortuitous. Interesting, just because I also think, like, the thirstiest person to take it is Newsom, who, who wants to run is Newsom, yeah. obviously. I, I don't think he would be a bad candidate. But then you also have Pritzker. Oh, I don't think who, it may the, the may guy less the, sanguine on Newsom. The guy who I would like to run, but I don't think will, and also but primarily because of his age, too, is Tim Walls, who's the governor of Minnesota. Um, he's, I think, one of the better, like, messengers of Democratic policy. Like, he's, like, you know, mm-hmm. while they're banning books, we're... we're All ending, ending fantastical. Hunger. Yeah. It, no, all I, of what we're talking about absolutely. is Absolutely. I agree. He's also 72, so I wouldn't want him to run anyway. No, I mean... No, wait. <laughs> In that regard. Like, yeah. just in terms of... He's, like, he's almost 10 years younger than Biden. <laughs> are you... Fr- chicken. <laughs> are you frustrated by this conversation because it's about nothing that's going to actually happen in reality? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I... I, yeah. I, I mean, I just think that, like... No, you know, I and- I mean, it, I, it, the only way it happens is if there's a more permanent uh, uh, outcome for Biden. I don't mean to be uh, cynical when I say that, but that's the correct. <laughs> correct. And then God knows what happens because you won't have the opportunity. Maybe at that point, I, I mean, if it was to happen in the next like week, you'd have five of those states who oh, reopen their deadlines, maybe. Um, but if we're talking, you know, three months, six months, I mean, what I. I uh, if, if Biden I, it, died in June, the, my anxiety level goes too high. <laughs> Uh, when I start to think about this stuff. And since he should have made this decision, the imaginary decision I wanted him to make, you know, uh, a year ago, but even a year, a year and a half ago, you could have the argument of like, we're a year and a half out. You can't, you know, you don't know how this yeah, 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 yeah. in a year. Let's talk in January of 2024, what the polling looks like. Oh, well, it turns out it looks as bad as it's looked, if not worse.